Hi everybody, welcome to Step by Step Farming. Today I'm going to show you all how to maintain your tower garden. Stay tuned. Anyway, when you first get a tower garden or when you have a tower garden, you're going to need to maintain it. You can't just let it sit and do its own thing. There are going to be two very important steps that you're going to have to do. The first thing you're going to have to do is make sure that your water reservoir is completely filled. There are times that the water will evaporate. Um, just because of you know the evaporation and the roots will absorb a lot of the water so eventually over time you will need to make sure that your reservoir that your water tank is holding is not low and I'm going to show you in this video what a low tank or reservoir looks like and what you'll need to do to replenish your water with that the second thing is that you're going to need to make sure that your pH level is is very is at a place where it needs to be where it's a perfect level it needs to be between 5.5 to 6.5 and i will show you all again in this video how i check the ph um, level for my plants okay so let's go ahead and begin when you get a tower garden if this is your first time or if you're like me um, you know you already have things that are growing if you look here, you can just see it's just, it's growing like crazy. We have lettuce, we have cilantro, we have collard greens down here. And I don't know if you can even see this down here, but you could probably even see the stalk of the collard greens. It's like, it's gorgeous. It's very healthy. It's a very healthy plant. Okay, so... Uh, anyway, as far as the water reservoir, there is a section here, a lid on the, the top that comes off. And if you can see, um, sweetie, I don't know if you can get any closer or not, but if you are able to see, the water level is very, very low. And those white things, I'll pull these out, these things here, this is actually the roots of all of the plants that's in this tower. But I would say there's probably about maybe, I don't know, eight inches in here. So it's extremely low. So what you wanna do is you want to fill your tank up. Do not fill it up with tap water, okay? There's chlorine, there's chemicals, and it'll, it'll completely kill your plants. What I do is I normally go to the store and I'll buy uh, jugs of, you can get distilled water, spring water, any type of uh, water like that. Right here, I have a natural spring water. It's about a two and a half gallon uh, jug. This is a 20 gallon reservoir. So all I do is, other than make a mess, is I fill it up. That's the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you have plenty of water in here. And I'm not sure exactly how much water it will take. I'm thinking it might take, I don't know, maybe three or four of these at least. Now, when you're filling this up, you wanna be very careful because there is a hole it's a small hole on the side of the tank. And that hole is for uh, a power cord. There's a pump inside of here. And um, so you wanna make sure that you don't overflow your tank past that point. And I, uh, what I do is I just kinda like stick my finger once I get kinda to the top, close to the top. I'll stick my finger by that hole and just make sure that, um, you know, that it's not too high. Okay, so 
minus three. I think probably four will probably be exactly what I need. So it is coming up a little higher. And this will make this the last one. Okay, so I'll stop right here. That's probably about, let's see, 10 gallons that I just put in here, all right? The next step that you're going to need to do is once you have filled that up, you want to check your pH level. Now, the reason why you want to check that is because sometimes when you add water, whether it's distilled spring water, it kind of changes the pH balance when you put it in. All right, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to check the pH. Now, there's two ways that you can do this is when, if you get a tower garden, it will come with a tester kit. And this is, I don't know if you can see this really well, but this is a tester kit and it gives you the different pH uh, levels. You want to have it between 5.5 and 6.5 so you're going to want it in between this green section if it's too orange then it's too acidic if it's too much like a bluish or purple then it's too alkaline and I'm going to explain what that means so we want to basically have it in this close I like to have it about 6.0 all right so there's a couple ways you can do that it does come with a tester kit so for example um, what you want to do is fill this up, just put this little valve in here, and you're going to fill it up to um, 0.5 milliliters, okay? And it comes with a dropper, and you're going to put five drops in here, one, two, three, four, five. So. As you all can see, so a little chemistry here. Shake it up, and it's a very, I don't know if you can see this really well or not, it's a very, very dark green. That's telling me that my pH level, if you compare it to the sheet that they give you, it's closer to a 7.5. That's way, way too high. So we're gonna to wanna to bring that down, and they give you um, minerals uh, that you can either raise it up, raise the pH level up, increase it, or you can lower the pH if it's too high. So you can use the droplets. I did use the droplets for a while, but to save money, I just went ahead and bought a digital pH tester. And I just basically got this off of Amazon. Um, it's a pH tester, and to me, it just seems like it lasts a lot longer. So what I will do is you take it off and you turn it on and it's at zero and just to verify I will stick it in the water and it kind of just sits there for a moment Let's see. there we go okay and I don't know you probably can't see it reading maybe you can mm -hmm. I'm not sure mm -hmm. But I just let it, you want to let it sit there for just a little while until it slows down with the reading. And from what I can see, <laughs> this is saying that it's around 7.8, 7.9, 8.0. 8. 8. I kind of test my, I, I personally, I like to depend on my digital reading versus the drop. So even if you use the drops or if you use this, the level of this pH is way too high. And if it's too high, you will begin to see things like, I'll show you real quick. 
you notice things are not quite right with your plants if your pH is off. So let me see if I can show you. Okay, so for example, if you can get in right here, sweetie, and show them this. Okay, so this right here, you can see, this is not as green. Um, it's yellow. It's starting to kind of turn dark around the edges. Um, that's an indication that this plant is not, and it's kind of limp, this plant is not getting enough nutrients. And if you don't catch it quick enough, if you just let it go on and on, um, then what will happen is everything in the in here. So you'll see, you know, some of this is a little is dying a little bit. Um, some you can tell if they begin to curl up. Here's another one right here. You can see, for example, you know, the sides of it is kind of. So you want to make sure that you're on top of making sure that your pH level is uh, is accurate. That is very very important. So let's go ahead and fix it. Let's stop all the talking. I have a measuring cup. And I normally put um, 50 milligrams, uh, I'm sorry, milliliters in at a time. Because if you put too much, then you have, you'll have you raise it or lower it too much, and then you have to keep going back and forth. So I just kind of do a little bit at a time. I'll, I'll stir it up, and then we'll go from there. You have two different minerals. You have um, the mineral blend, the blue, I've marked it where the blue label is, this will lower my pH level. And then I have another one that has a green label. This is letter A, and this will raise my pH. This is just for me to know for myself which one, um, which one works and which one I need to use. Okay, so since it was so high, we want to lower the pH level. So I would take my mineral blend, I'll shake it up, and I would add about point, uh, five milliliters to it. And I'm gonna stir it up, pour it in there. I just kind of rinse it out. If you have a like a stick or um, like a big long spoon or something like that, I just found something I had laying around. And I'm just stirring my water up just so that it could be mixed up really well. And um, the pump will actually turn on once uh, 15 minutes out of every hour. It's really good if you're able to wait, let it kind of cycle through and test it again. But for time's sake, we're just going to do it this way. All right, so I put a little bit of pH in it to turn it down. And I'm going to just test it again real quick. And sweetie, if you could just show just just for them to see. Okay, so it is starting to go down a little bit, but not as much as I need. It's kind of like in between 7.5, it was 7.3 to, so it's still not at what I want. So you just basically rinse and repeat the same thing, okay? If it looks like it's not down enough, you just add a little bit more. Pour it inside. Stir it up and test it again. So I'm just kind of move it around. Another reason why you want to make sure that you have enough water in your tank is that you don't want your pump to burn out either. So that's another big indicator as well. So let's see. It's 7.2, somewhere around there, it's kind of fluctuating. I'm going to put just a little bit more in there because it was pretty high. And we'll probably stop after this and we'll let it cycle 
and we'll come back later once it kind of cycles through a couple of times and we'll check the pH and it should be at a place that I like it to be which is right around 6.0. Just check it one last time. Also, when you use these digital kind, they like for you to rinse it off every time you, you know, you do it so that the, the reading is not inaccurate. And it's going down to about 7.08. somewhere around there. So I've put probably about 100 milliliters of this uh, mineral blend. And before I go any further, I just, I'm gonna let it kind of cycle through. Um, and then, like I said, we will come back and we'll see what the pH balance is. Hi everybody, welcome back. As promised, I wanted to give you all an update on my pH. So in the earlier part of this video, uh, I believe my pH was way too high and I used the uh, minerals that comes with it and I just write down, I have two different kinds, one that raises the pH and one that lowers it. And so um, as stated before, you want to have your pH to be between five and a half to six and a half. And so um, normally I would wait maybe an hour or two, you know, let it cycle through to see what the pH is, but I got caught up and was busy and had some other things to do. So it's been a couple of days since I've been back. And so let's go ahead and check to see what our pH is now. So I'm going to open this up and as you can see, it's at zero. And I'm going to stick this in here. And I want it to be between five and a half and six and a half. And I don't know if you can see the reading or not. I'll try to turn that a little bit. I think it's like 5.7, 5.8, and some change somewhere around there. Let's see. Yep, yeah, 5.86. So that is a good reading. That's a good reading. And then what I do with this digital um, pH tester is I just dip it in some clean water so that it's not contaminated with what's already been in there. And the next time that I do the tester, it won't give me a false reading. So anyway, that is pretty much it. That is how you maintain your tower garden. And that is how you test your pH. You want to do this probably, I would suggest, this is just me, and this is kind of trial and error for me as well, but I would say you probably want to check your pH at least twice a week at the minimum, just to make sure that there isn't any change in the water or, or anything like that. So I appreciate it. Please check out our other videos that we have. If you have any questions about this tower garden, I would do my best to answer whatever questions I'm able to. Thanks again for joining. Have a good one. Bye.